Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. On this day the Lord has acted. We shall be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the risen Lord, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. When I was a freshman in college, I participated in several different charitable events throughout the year. If you were a member of Greek life and fraternity or sorority, there were so many events that you participated in. And these were not just like selling candy to raise about $1,000 for some random charity. These were big events. My own fraternity had something called Diamond Days in which we had a baseball game and we played right on the Rebels field. Same was true for another fraternity that, that did what was called the Charity Bowl. And they actually played in Vault Hemingway Stadium against another fraternity. Raised over $50,000 one of the years I was there. But my favorite, my favorite charitable event that was put on was something called Fight Night. Now, Fight Night is an amateur boxing event. You didn't think you were going to hear about boxing on Easter Sunday, did you? What would happen is each fraternity would put up a different person to enter into the tournament and you would fight and depending on who won those are who the sponsors would pay money towards the charity they don't do it anymore I don't know, something about concussions and a bunch of other you know newfangled stuff but man back then it was fun I never participated but I was there but one of my good friends participated and the only problem with him being involved is he was not a boxer. He didn't have any boxing skill. He didn't have any boxing weight. As a matter of fact, he was about 6'2", maybe 160, 165 soaking wet. But he managed to make his way through the fight night tournament. As a matter of fact, he got to the final. It was in this final that we just knew he's about to get killed. Because there in the other corner was some big old Delta boy. And he looked mean as sin. But Mike was ready to go. And he got in, the bell rung. We went through I don't know how many rounds. And my friend was just getting pummeled. I mean, he was getting jabs and hooks right in the face. He was getting haymakers to the side. getting I mean, just hitting the mat time and time again. But he kept getting back up. Matter of fact, he got up enough to wear the other boxer out. And he wound up winning. We were talking to him afterwards. Mike, how in the world? How in the world did you keep getting up? 
And he said, man, I just kept saying to myself, just got to rise. Just got to rise. Every time I hit the floor, got to rise. Got to rise. We didn't know if he was on performance enhancing drugs or not. (laughs) But I'll tell you, that tenacity, that phrase, got to rise, has stuck with me now for over 12 years. If anybody has been knocked to the mat, has been punched in the face, is down for the count, it is the women that we meet on their way to the tomb. In today's gospel lesson from St. Mark, Mary, the mother of James, so Mary being Mary the Virgin, so the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene and Salome all are making their way to the tomb. And they don't know what to do other than just to keep the traditions of ripe, of the Jewish burial traditions of wrapping the body in spices. So they're just going along with the custom because that's all they know how to do because their world's been shattered. Their friend, in one case their son, their teacher, their Lord has been murdered. And they watched it happen. Watched him die on a Roman cross and be laid in a tomb hone in the rock. They, they even seem to think that they're going to be punched again because they're talking on the way up there and they go, you know, we bought all these spices. We're on our way up here but while the sun is coming up and we don't even know if we can get in the tomb. Hopelessness. Hopelessness will punch you in the face and will keep you down on the mat. But upon arriving, they see that the the stone is rolled away. And they peer in and are alarmed because there is a man in dazzling white saying to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. But he is not here, for he is risen. Jesus Jesus had within him that spirit that made him rise up. Why did he have to rise up? Because, you see, friends, not, not only is it true for the disciples, not only is it true for the women we meet in today's gospel lesson, it's true for us too. We have all met a punch that has knocked us to the ground that we cannot overcome. Sin and death, we cannot overcome them. So we needed a champion. And Jesus enters into that ring of life and death for us. And just when you think that death and that hopelessness and fear have won, you see that the stone is rolled away. Not only that, but we hear that Jesus has gone ahead of us into Galilee. He's not done fighting for us yet. Jesus had it within him. He had to rise. Well, if anybody else has been punched in the mouth, I'd have to say it's us over this past year. 100 year worldwide pandemic. Something that has turned our lives upside down. It's certainly affected our daily routines, our Sunday routines. A year ago, I was preaching to about four people in that camera on Easter Sunday. It was hard to talk about resurrection. And I won't lie to you, it's still hard to talk about it this morning. As I think about those whom we've lost, as I think about jobs that have been lost, As I think about just the changes and the chances of this life that come and punch us even when we're already down. But it is in the midst of that when we think we are down and out for the count and there's nothing that's going to save us, there is Jesus. There is Jesus reminding us to rise. Resurrection is not just about 
a Sunday morn those 2,000 years ago. Resurrection is not just about a sermon once a year on Easter Sunday. Resurrection is about the daily getting knocked down and then getting back up because we serve a God who walked out of the grave. It is from that power that you and I are given the tenacity. We're given the Holy Spirit. We are given the power, the power of the resurrection that no matter what comes our way, we know that Jesus has not only not only confronted it before, but that he continues to go ahead of us, just as he did for the disciples. So I want to challenge you and to challenge myself. Let's be about the business of practicing resurrection. And all of life's challenges and all the punches that we will get, because guess what? They're still going to come. Even after the pandemic is gone, even... Uh, whenever things seem just perfect, the punches, they're going to come. It's during that, in the midst of that trial or that trouble that we can say, but we serve Jesus Christ who comes to us and fills us with resurrection power and says to you and to me,